Why, hello everyone. Good to see you again. Hopefully you're not sick of me. I know, I know uh, Fridays can be tough. Man, you got too much, too much of Paul, but hopefully, uh, yeah, uh, you guys will enjoy this. This is our Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. We've been talking about elements of art. So uh, we actually went through all of them and we're gonna, we have them as part of our uh, arsenal to reach into as we create a monogram today. So I don't I want to wish you a, a warm hello, Roseanne, Stoney, Basmala as well. Hello. Uh, yeah, Popsicle shirt. This was uh, given away at Max one year, like a couple of years ago. So uh, yeah, and I, I love this shirt from Sappy Paper. So anyways, it's all good. Steve, Steve, I got the go ahead from Steve. So uh, let's get this party started. If you're joining me elsewhere, know that I'm of course on uh, lovely Behance, and we're diving into today's creative challenge. Hello again, Rick is back, Garth's in the house, Michelle is here. So check this out. Uh, we are on day five, monogram. So taking everything we've learned from the elements of art and we're gonna throw together a quick monogram or logo or cipher, whatever you wanna call it, right? It's gonna be taking your initials uh, first, middle, and last name, or at least first and last name, combining them together to make a monogram. So that is the goal. Just go ahead and click get started. This file doesn't have a whole lot going on, right? Because you are adding all the magic to it, okay? So this is what it looks like. It just has three letters in there that you're going to replace. So uh, that's what you have, and uh, thanks for hanging out. Cool. Bam, shabam, shaba. All right, uh, yeah, so let's do this, shall we? I like how my shirt matches the buttons. Okay, and by the way, make sure once we get this done, post to um, good old Discord. I've seen some amazing work come through here. Uh, yeah, it's been super fun. Uh, everybody's getting the hang of it. We did a lot of shape and form yesterday using texture. So everybody's doing like a really cool job. So I'm so proud of you guys. So impressed, look at this. Like almost, it's like a game is built. How impressive is that? So we need to sign this this artwork with a monogram, right? Because that's actually what you would typically do, right? It's like, this is my signature, it's my monogram. Okay, so let's go in here. Here's the file, as you can see, right? Uh, we could click on those. We have some shapes back here we can work with, but mainly your letters. So type in your name, uh, Carol Pearl, right? CP, whatever. Roseanne Rosario is a very cool. Oh, I love your name. Ah, oh, what a cool name, Roseanne Rosario. Um, awesome. So you guys have some cool names. Some M. M is a great letter, Murray. Oh, an M and a C. Kind of having an M and a C kind of intertwine is such would be such a cool idea, right? So again, just kind of jumping in here really fast. We would maybe pick the font. I'm gonna make sure it is gonna be a. C. Let's go with uh, serif font, right? Because we want it to be a little bit more classic. And then we can pick our font right in here. So just like so. I would want to make sure that it's kind of like this, that. There we go. Adobe Garmin Pro, something like that. So I just wanted it to be like the letters to be kind of thin, but still have that serif with it. But putting those two together would be like so cool, right? So have at it. I also realize this is our first time that we are using fonts. So, um, oh, JP, yeah, J and a P, huh, I love it. This is so much fun. So anyways, let's do this. I'm gonna use my initials, P-R-T, because it is a party today, as they say. And we can start to create a type lockup. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna cut these out. I'm gonna put them on their own layer, like so, right? So we don't have um, those uh, shapes behind it, okay? But typically a monogram, just if we're being specific, was often your last name was gonna be the large letter. This is, how, this is the format of a typical, um, a typical monogram. It was your the letter of your last name, and then your first name on the left side, and then your middle name on the right side. So that's sort of a typical monogram, is how the, the format uh, traditionally uh, is, okay? 
but not in this case. I want to have some fun with it, and we're going to create some cool uh, designs. Uh, I always encourage you to kind of just go out there and Google monogram just to see what you get, right? <sighs> yeah, there that is, but monograms. Just Google mono monograms. You could do this also through Behance as well. You might even get better options, but you can kind of see the different type lockups, the letters, and what people have been doing. And we can do all of this stuff. So go and get inspired. You get the idea. Okay. Yeah, I love the idea of I love the idea of in and out letters, like letters that look like they overlap. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. But just to kind of recap type, okay, see, keep in mind I have three letters here. If I go over here to my layers panel, I'll twirl down and we have sub layers within this um, this layer. So keep that in mind because sometimes you'll try to select the R and you'll click on the T. It's because the T is in front of everything else. So just keep in mind that stacking um, and you could also shuffle those. Oh, if I could only remember my shortcut keys. Okay, uh, uh. well anyways, shift command, we'll bring it to the top and bottom, shift command, open closing brackets, works the same for Photoshop. Cool. SFC, Steve Festus Casaboom, I appreciate you putting your, uh, yeah, uh, name in there. So here's one version, we could do that, we could pull that down, we could throw this in a circle by the way and call it a day, right? You're like, okay, I don't have time for today's Daily Creative Challenge, there's a lovely little monogram of my letters. If you do this and contain it within a circle, just make sure that that uh, outline has roughly the same thickness as your letters, just so it all kind of ties together. And you know what? Chances are we're probably going to over-design. That's okay. You over-design, you scale it back. But again, this one totally works. Group it together, shrink it down. There's version one. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna go into preferences general. I'm gonna scale strokes and effects. So now that line does not change, but there's one. Um, I like the idea of the overlapping. So let's do this. Go out here, pick the font that you want, just like I'm doing. Um, I want it to actually be a thin serif font. So we'll go right over here and we'll select uh, a regular or a lightweight. So what we're doing is we're toggling that and let's just see if we can see a little bit more of it there we go we're toggling these as being serif fonts lightweight and looks like i don't have a lot to be honest with you i actually might want to go with medium weight because i think the lightweight's almost too thin yeah love it big castle on medium yeah let's do it all right, let's do some fun layering. This is what I thought would be cool as well. Paul Danger Tranny. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I'm not. I'm like, I'm medium. You talk about hardcore, I'm like medium core, right? I'm like, I want to start a medium core um, gang. That's the type of gang I want to be a part of. Okay, so we're going to create some overlapping here. All right. So, how shall we do this? We could do this a couple different ways. Uh, I do want to point out that I've been just using the type tool. There's the area type tool, type on a path. There's all these different options. Probably the most popular is type tool, type on a path. And then I'll use uh, a touch type, the touch type tool when I need to as well. So if we ever use the touch type tool, it means we are going to keep everything on one line, but we can still move those letters around. Again, I did this this morning, so I don't want to belabor the point, but here we have a touch type tool. I could make that same format that you saw earlier, right? Without putting this text all on one line. I can grab these letters and what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the kerning and the um, baseline as well. Do something like that. So there we are touch type tool, creating this type lockup, and notice that 
It's all on one line, bam, bam, bam. Look at that, how fancy is that? You'll notice it's all on one line, because look, it's all one layer. Easy. Let's turn it up to medium, yeah! That's me. Yeah, let's play that. Let's rock out to some Maroon 5. All right. Okay, from there, you might want to um, outline your text. So if you really want to modify your text, you might need to outline it, okay? So if you right-click, create outlines, like so. Now we can see all of these individual points that make up this letter that we can manipulate, okay? A lot of people do that. You might know what's up, and that's what you do. It's also right up here, create outlines. All right. Okay, let's have some fun overlapping going on, because what I'm thinking is, for this letter, let's have, let's just take away part of this P right here. So I'm just drawing a box. I'll select both of these, and then I'll go over to my, my Pathfinder. Pathfinder is going to allow me to uh, add or subtract uh, or intersect or exclude. I'm going to do a minus front because I just draw, drew that box. So I'm going to hold down the Option key, click minus front. So the reason I held down the Option key is we can go in and we can adjust this any way we want. In fact, I wonder if we could draw something else within that compound shape. And I guess the answer is no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what I was thinking is like do something like that. <sighs> so I'm trying to make it look like kind of the the shadow of the R is that negative space right there. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to make it look like the shadow of this curve is being cast on the R right there. So let's do that. This is going to get interesting. Jump in here, click, click, oops. Uh, so I'm doing something that's kind of spooky this weekend. Should be good. I want to hear what you guys have going on this weekend. If you guys have any plans, I know in the U.S. we have Memorial Day. So it means three days off. So I will not be with you on Monday, but I'll be right back with you on Tuesday. Select those two. Same thing. Option key. Click. There we are. We have that sort of in and out is what I'm working on. All right. Ah... Uh, Awesome, good to hear. Oh, thank you so much. Um, loved hearing about this challenge. Vanessa, oh, with a V? I'm jealous of your name, man. That's so cool to have a V. I think it would be super sweet. Okay, so there we are. So a little bit of an overlap. We'll take this T, we'll do the same thing. Maybe we'll do it down here. And uh, it's just gonna take some playing with. Right, so let's let's play with it now. In fact, I want let's move this. Let's just play with it. Pen tool, hit P for pen. I want to take out this chunk of the T, like so. Selecting both of those. And option click. There we go. What do you guys think? Huh? Yeah, avoid the crowds at the beach there in Florida. I'm gonna be going up to the Stanley Hotel, which is haunted. 
You guys probably heard of the movie The Shining. Well, that's based on the Stanley Hotel. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get scared up there. It's the plan. And spend some time in the mountains. There we go, have those two selected. It's the same process. Let's take a look at this now. Oh, sorry, it's this R. There we go. And we'll make sure it looks like this goes behind the T. Boom. Again, just one idea. The nice thing is there's no, there are no wrong ideas here in Illustrator. Just some ideas might work better than others. We have it like so. Select, select. Bring that in a little bit. Like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's just an idea. What do you guys think? Is it okay? Is the R kind of hard to read? Yeah, maybe. All right, okay. Let's say for instance, I wanna put this, this is really tough to read. That's why this one's working a little bit better. It's just easier to read overall. Another fun option I thought of is taking this, let's just outline it. Ungroup, take this letter. We wanna flip this so we could use the reflect tool. This is typically how I use it is you can hit O to highlight it, but I just double click on the reflect tool and that's gonna give you your reflect options. Cause I wanna flip it vertically just like that. Click okay, there it is, boom. And do we do something like this? Like P, R, and then weave the T in there somehow. I don't know. That's obviously not working. <laughs> Right there, illegible. It's not legible. It's not legible. <laughs> okay, so let's go with this one. Right, we know this one is working. Let's take it down here. Let's say we want to put this on a shield into just a more interesting shape. Peter, you are exactly right. That's hard to read. <laughs> I'm like, keep me in check. I hear you. It's like, oh, that was bad. Uh, let's say I want to put this on like a shield of some sort. Click, click, click. Come down here, click right there. Let's go ahead and just make sure this is an outline. And uh, you could do, there's a number of ways you could do this. I would say, let's think. There are three different ways we can uh, execute this shape to make it a shield, right? One way is to copy, paste on top, or paste in place, oops. Not just that line, select the whole thing. Copy, paste in place, and then you can flip it like that. And actually we kind of need to move it over. This is probably the most like laborious way of doing things. Cause then we have to select these two lines and then we have to go down here. We gotta go to object and we gotta join. So uh, command J, right, there's one shield, if you will, right? That was a lot of work. Let's try this though, too. Let's say, for instance, we have a shape. And you know what would be really cool is to make this look like a pencil. So I think that would be cool for, for me as a designer. But nonetheless, let's do this one more time. Or excuse me, two more times. Here we are, our shape. We'll go to effect, distort and transform. We'll transform this. We're gonna make a copy of it. We're gonna reflect the X and we're gonna make one copy. I've actually never done this before. <laughs> I've never used this, but right over here, now we can say, hey, you know what? Pivot on that uh, far right side. So we're using the transform effect to basically copy, make a copied version, reflect it on the X axis and make sure that pivot point is on the right side. 
Okay, just like that, click OK. There that is. But of course you need to expand appearance to, uh, to do that, to have that set up, you know, and all that fun stuff, okay? So there's way number two. And then number three, which might be the, maybe the easiest, it's certainly the most fun. Let's move this into place. And this is the newest way. We'll do a mirror repeat. Bam, there it is, mirror repeat. What's nice about this is we can go in and notice how it's such an odd shape. Well, guess what? We'll select that top point. We'll position it just like so, right? We'll have this curve out a little bit more like that and make it look more like a shield that way, okay? Easy enough, right? And again, select it. What that is, is the uh, mirror repeat, done. All right, how is everyone's day going? I'm curious as well. You can always expand ap appearance and uh, make sure there's nothing weird going on there, which there is. Command J, Command J. And uh, we could have fun with this line now as well. All right, guess what? There's more that we could do because I'm not crazy about this uh, this shield because you know what? I happen to know if I go into symbol libraries, go to window, symbol libraries, go to, uh, regal vector pack. Go to that regal vector pack, open that up. Oh, sure enough, Paul, you're trying to make a shield. Stuff like that, guess what? That's all right in here. So maybe I could just grab one of these and use it. Okay, so let's do that. Let's grab this one, drop it in here. Oh yeah, that looks cool. Bring this down like so. Make sure it's on top of everything else. Ah, uh, ooh, look at you, Helena. Yeah, you're right. That is also a good call. Let's just try that really fast. Stock.adobe.com. Change this to free, and we'll just go monogram or shield or something like that. Oh, there they all are. Look at all these gorgeous free elements that we could use. So yeah, some of these are really cool. I like this, I like this one. That one's really cool. And this one as well. All right, cool. We have that set up. Um, I could offset this a little bit. Um, So let's just do this really fast. We'll just do a, um, let's just do a drop shadow. I can offset that a little bit. I can turn a drop shadow into just white, opacity 100%, no blur, right? And there we have uh, that kind of popping a little bit more and seems to look pretty good. Cool. So we're seeing how many we can make in one go, huh? Oh shoot, it's about time for me, shoot. Time flies when you're having fun. All right, there we are. I'm gonna go with this one, right? But just play with your initials. Make a monogram and then show me what you come up with by posting to good old uh, Discord. So there we are. Turn off that bottom layer, export this out, call it a day. Was that easy or was that easy? Boom, done. Again, this is a great place to get feedback. I might add that Jack Watson has been doing such a good job providing feedback. So thank you so much, Jack. Go to challenge, 
Just upload it. Bam. A monogram. Done. And see what everybody has to say. So thank you so much, Andrea, uh, Yao, and everyone. Appreciate you guys. Lorianne, Steve, Cody Bear, of course. You guys are awesome. And uh, we will see you on Tuesday. Now, if you're watching the recording, by the way, take this to the next level because you could actually combine this stuff. So take your initials and you know what? Try it out in 3D, right? Amaze yourself with combining some things that you've learned this week to make something new, okay? So that's what I encourage you to do. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Uh, if you don't hear from me on Tuesday, then I was then the ghosts got me up at the Stanley Hotel. But hopefully I will see you on Tuesday. Chances are uh, you will. So thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Be kind to one another. And have a beautiful weekend. And uh, just follow me on all the social medias as I start to update some of this stuff. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good one. See ya.